Hey everyone, my guest today is Adam Pascal. Adam rose to global fame when he was cast in the role of Roger in the original production of Rent, and then inhabited the role again for the film version of Rent and the West End version of Rent and the world tour of Rent, all the Rents. Um, <laughs> some of his other Broadway credits include Aida, Cabaret, Memphis, Chicago, Disaster and Something Rotten. You are going to recognize these titles, Model Prisoner, Civilian, and Blinding Light, because those are the names of his albums. He's currently working on and performing this incredible solo show, solo show, um, <laughs> I'm drunk, Adam, I'm drunk. Uh, That's right, I'm high, so there we go. It's perfect. going to be a great interview. <laughs> um, solo show so far, correct? Yes. Um, and that is a show that explores his personal journey as an artist through storytelling and song. And um, he'll tell us more about that today. I'm so thrilled to catch up with you today. It's ridiculous. Likewise. Oh, you're so sweet. Likewise, it's, it's so nice to be here. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. Um, as we speak, it's 25 years since I first saw you do Roger in Rent, which is so crazy. Time is so crazy. Um, but really, the story of that show, I'm sure, is part of the solo show you're doing, among other things. But you got to give the people what they want, Adam. I have learned that over the years. As much as I've resisted it over the years, I've learned that that is true. You have to give them what they want. It's what, not what you want. It's what they want. Um, and uh, so I've, I've, I've embraced that. And yes, I do. I totally talk about uh, how I got into doing musicals, you know, and, and how I got into Rent, but which is also my story about how I got into doing musicals. It's the same story. Um, is and it so, apocryphal um, or is it true? I know you and Adina went to the same high school. I think that's a fact, but is it that true is that she is somehow the reason that you ended up being cast in the show? And tell the that story. That is true. Okay. Uh, that, is, that is true. Um, so, well, the reality of the story is 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 a little bit different than the story that I tell on stage, <laughs> to, to be quite honest with you. Okay. Um, you know, like when you tell the same story over and over again for years and it kind of morphs into something and then you kind of forget what the actual truth of the original story was because it's, it's morphed so much. Well, so... Basically, I, I yeah, the, essentially that is true. I got a call from her then boyfriend, Glenn, who was a buddy of mine. I've known her since third grade. We've literally been to school, elementary, middle school, like, I mean, everything. She lived down the block from me, totally down the block from me. Um, and, um, and so, uh, he, you know, he, so she had gotten cast in the show. So he, he and she knew about this role of Roger. They knew about the show that she was about to do. And they knew that uh, they said that they, the character sounded just like me, and um, and and they and they were opening up the casting to anyone who wanted to audition. So Idina and Glenn called me, um, and and said you know that we're doing this show. The, the only difference in the story that I tell on stage is I just omit Glenn's name from the story. It's a it's it's kind of irrelevant, poor Glenn. But you know, so it's but yeah, so. Idina called me uh, and uh, and said, you know, she was doing this off Broadway show, and did I want to audition? And so she kind of she kind of made it sound interesting, and and I went in, and they made it sound interesting, and so, so I, I went in. Does Idina like call Bernie Telsey for you, or do you have to kind of figure out how to get an audition on your own? Like, how does no, that piece it, happen? Well, it was it was an I remember it was an open call, okay. and 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 I think interestingly enough. Idina's boyfriend at the time, Glenn, worked for a talent agent. And that's how I ended up getting the information of where to go, you know? And it was like, it's not like Bernie Telsey's office now. It was some it was some closet that like he rented for the afternoon, you know, like just to see people, you know? Um, and so, uh, so yeah, so I, I just, um, I showed up with my guitar and just played a song. Like it was just, and there was like four other guys there and, you know, and I remember sitting there and guys would go before me and I can hear them saying, I was like, that guy sucks. <laughs> That's so much better because I'm always in the waiting room going, oh my God, they sound so good. I'm well, go these home. days, yes, back then, yeah, back then in that situation, no, but yes, no, that's what happens now. But that's now I'm so like, oh good. my God. I don't uh, now, like, oh, they're so young. <laughs> they're so young. Um, how amazing. And what did you sing? Uh, I sang a song from U2's Joshua Tree record called The Red Hill Mining Town. And I actually played in my concert. 
So let me ask you, you were, I mean, I think part of why Idina and Glenn and everyone were, was like, this is a great idea because at yeah. the time they were like, let's have the people who are as much like these characters, if possible, do this right. show. Um, at the time they didn't know it was gonna be a Broadway show and that it sure. would go on for 25 years and the next 125 years. <laughs> um, you were a rock and roller, right? Like that was yes. your, like Roger, I mean, you right. had this dream. Well, exactly. I, I, you know, I, I grew up in on Long Island and in New York City, and and I played in rock bands, and and in those ways, like the character, I had these same dreams of of rock stardom, and and you know, and hence the song "One Song Glory" and wanting to leave some piece of something behind after you're gone, so that you will be remembered by. And it's interestingly enough, the irony is, is me like him wanted that same thing, and now I am connected to this show and that song, which does exactly that. You know. <laughs> It's so um, heady, right? Yeah. It's so meta and yes, heady. Yes, I was just going to say, the it's meta, thing. it's very meta. <laughs> but you had not acted before. Were you doing high school musicals? I shouldn't no, say you I mean, had not acted. My assumption is. No, your assumption is correct. I had not. Um, and so, no, I, um, I, I, you know, once I started playing in bands, that was the only thing that ever entered my thought process. I, could, I, I It never occurred to me to be an actor. I, I never wanted to be an actor. It's just like, I'm a singer in a rock band. That, that's what I do, like, you know, and so that was where my mind was for all of those years. And so d did you get there surrounded by um, people who had done it before, most of whom had done it before on some level? Anthony obviously had been a, a child actor, so he brought a lot right. of um, professional experience to the thing. Michael right. Greif obviously knew how to create an ensemble and a family and tell this story um, and make sure everyone felt confident in what they did in the story. Right. Um, did you feel, because you were so young and game, did you just jump in or were you like, guys, I don't know if this is a good idea? No, I just jumped in and I, I just jumped in, you know, and it, it, so early on in the process, almost immediately, I felt this level of almost familiarity to the mm -hmm. process, um, even though I had never done it before, a, 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 a comfort level that I've ne that I had never felt singing in a rock band. Um, and so it immediately felt just very natural to me to, to be doing this with all these people. And they were so encouraging and um uh you know gracious in in their in their in their spirit you know uh, um and and their understanding of my lack of experience you know mm -hmm. what i mean and so had i not been with this group of people i don't know if i would have been able to you know ultimately give the performance I was able to give, um, you know, if I was surrounded by people who didn't have maybe the same level of patience with my inexperience that, that they all had. And what did Jonathan tell you, you know, when you, I assume you were able to sit with him and, and have him share who this person is and what he wanted this person to do in the story what were some things that you remember that you can share about what he wanted for roger and did well, you know you, think you were playing him no no i never thought i was playing him okay um i definitely thought that that he if anybody it was more mark that was him okay you know what i mean certainly in the in the in in the way that the character thinks I think that that definitely Mark was more Jonathan than, than mm -hmm. Roger. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, you know, he, I, he, I remember him mentioning specifically Kurt Cobain to me once, um, but he also never, he never gave me too much about it because I think he wanted to allow, you know, he, he, he wanted to give me the opportunity to discover this sort of person on my own. Um, and I think maybe he might have recognized that because this person and I were so close that for the same reason, he wanted to then have allow me to have the opportunity to discover that, you know, because so much of this was already in me, these, you know, these feelings that this character is going through, was, uh, you know, so many things similar to the things that I was going through. Um, and, um, but I, I really think that 
I mean, I, I, you know, you, you obviously know what an I want song is. If you're, if people in the audience don't know what an I want song is, it's sort of, you know, it's like that song in the show that the character sings that really kind of as best they can uh, sum up what it is their motivation is, you know, in the show or whatever. Um, and I, One Song Glory really is like one of the greatest I want songs I've ever heard. Forget about whether you actually like the song or not, but if you think about it lyrically and and what he's saying, like it really is encapsulating everything about everything you need to know about this character right now, you know, in so, in, in in a really really great way, a clear way. Yeah, it's pretty phenomenal storytelling. I yeah. mean, it's it's perfect storytelling. Um, when you said before there was something about being in a in a play or a musical in this case that felt more at home in yes. some ways than when you were in a band with your friends. Yes. What do you think that is? Um, I think it's it, it's several things. Um, I always felt like a an imposter, and this is of course with years of of retrospective thinking. But um, yeah. I, I always felt like uh, uh, an imposter as as the singer in a rock band. I so best. I so desperately wanted to be Bono. You know, I so desperately wanted to be John Bon Jovi, but I wasn't, you know, and, and, um, and, and part of me knew that, mm -hmm. you know, subconsciously part of me knew that. And so I think, it, so there was always an element that seemed a little bit off about that. And, you know, I just wasn't in my home yet. I hadn't found my home yet, you know, and, and I'm so unbelievably grateful that I did find a home, you know what I mean? In, in. Um, but, but that, you know, so, so I think that that was a big part of it. You know what I mean? And another part is that I felt, um, and this is a thing that singers can really, singers in rock bands can really connect with, I think, when I talk about this, which is that, you know, that charisma that you want to have, that's, that's not about you're performing the songs. It's about how you engage the audience in between the songs. You know what I mean? It's that charisma that is so vital to being a rock star. You know what I mean? To the biggest rock stars in the world have that. They have that ability to hold an audience, even if they don't say anything, you know what I mean? Like there's whatever, it, whatever their thing is, you know what I mean? Whether it's something quiet and introspective, but still holds that audience or, or whether it's Bono talking about the things he's talking about or, you know, whatever it is, whether it's David Lee Roth being a, you know, you know, there's so many different versions of it, but I didn't have any version of it, <laughs> you know? But how and so, amazing that you got to play the guy who did, you know, it, right. Alice and Janney, I remember her telling me this story that she had to play a, a queen in this mm -hmm. play and she was like, uh, queen how, how can I be a queen like I don't you know and the director was like no no, no you don't have to do anything everyone's going to treat you like the queen and right. because they are treating you like a royal person right. you are a royal right. person and right. there's something about those those musicians that you mentioned that somehow it intuited or inherently had that feeling without other people having to give it to them first Exactly. Um, which is which is some innate thing you're born with, right? Like the I, it boy yes. or the it girl or the this this star quality that yes. people talk about. Charisma is the word, right? Right, right. and it's right, and it's and, and it's a very specific charisma to that yeah. skill and that thing. You know what I mean? Because you and can take person. any one of those, right? You could take any one of those guys out of that environment and out of the, what it is that they do and that brilliant charisma that, that, that you know, mm -hmm. that they can hold a hundred thousand people in a stadium and put them in a different type of performing scenario and they'll fall on their face and, and that charisma won't save them and it won't matter. You know what I mean? And so it's really about the, the specific skill to the specific thing that you're doing. And yeah, so I just didn't have that in the, at least in the way that I wanted it. And, and, or at that and age, so, I mean, you were so age. young, right? How old right, were you right, when you got exactly. cast in the show? Well, I, I was 25. So you think of the years that I was playing in a band. I was a teenager, you know. Or a baby. Like, of course, you know. Yeah, um, I know. And 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 thank God for us. Thank God for <laughs> us. We we Broadway stole you first, or got you, or this. Thing I fa happened. I feel the same way. Thank God. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, I mean, you kept going. There there was this run of shows 
that starred you one after the other. And then I remember when you and Sherry Renee Scott did Aida's shortly thereafter, Shigaboom Records was, was created by, right. by Sherry and her then husband, yep. Kurt Deutsch. And suddenly all of these incredible performers that they were working with on Broadway stages had this label where they could make their own music. And you were yeah. one of the first artists that I recall it was, um, it was, it was, it was uh, uh, Sherry's solo record and my solo record were the first two records that, that Sugar Boom put out, yeah. So then I only bring that up because now there's this moment where you do go back to this thing you want to do, which is yes. as Adam, not right. behind a character. Um, right. and, and it worked and then you started to do that. But Red keeps pulling everybody back in who's in that original cast because it's just too good to pass up. Each well, time it, it comes around. Well, certainly over the years, I mean, look, I, I'm I'm certainly at a place now where that ship has sailed. <laughs> but uh, but um, you know, it's it's it, it, it yes, it did keep coming back up at at opportune moments that seemed appropriate, you know. Mm -hmm. And so so uh, after I left, um, I, I I'll just give you the whole timeline. So it was like it was rent on, it was off Broadway, then it was Broadway, a little bit of a break, then it was London. Uh, me and Anthony and Jesse and Wilson went to London and we opened it in London. Yeah. So that was like a six months or a year or something like that. Then there was, um, and then there was a long break. Uh, and then there was uh, a movie. the movie. Uh, then there was the movie in 2005. And then Anthony and I went back to Broadway for the summer of 2007. And then we did the, the national tour in 2009. And that took us through like 2009 into whatever it was, 2010 and a half. Can we talk about the beautiful human that is Anthony Rapp for yes, a moment? Yes, we certainly can. For hours, you, we can talk about that. For <laughs> hours. You guys were in London when he auditioned for Charlie Brown, which is um, the show I got to meet him on. And I've told this before, but every once in a while, he would sing as a warm up for Charlie Brown, some songs for Rent that just landed exactly where he needed to vocally. Yes. And I, as someone who just had loved that musical, do you think you would have loved it as much as everyone else loves it if you aren't in it? Uh, that's such a great question. And I think about that all the time. I really do. Um, no. And, and, <laughs> well, well, uh, it's really an I don't know. You know, it's yeah. an I don't know. I think about a, a lot of things sort of connected to that. Like I think about like, yes, would I have liked it? Would I have auditioned for it? You know, had it be if I had never been like, you know, um, and then I th and then I sort of extrapolate from that and think about, well, would I would I have like tried to go on American Idol like if I know, you know, or like the voice or, you know, like I think about like had my career not gone in the way that it yeah. had gone, would I have tried those different paths, you know? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So either. glad I didn't have to. <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't either. And I think about relationships that formed marriages that happened you know, through that and, show. And, and ended. <laughs> and ended. Um, yeah. Are you still married? I am not. Okay. So how long have you been divorced? Uh, we're at, well, we're actually not divorced, but we've been separated for about a year and a half. Okay. But you have two incredible boys. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Le how Lennon old are they Monty. now? They Lennon. are 17. And, yeah. They are 17 and 19. Lennon is going to be a sophomore in college and Monty is uh, going to be a senior in high school. Okay, so Lennon is almost the age you were yeah. when you did Rent. A few years younger, but yeah, yeah, he's, he's almost 20. That's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, I know, That's I know. That's pretty exciting. So I want to know about the show that you're doing and sort of, um, because A, even though, you know, we're talking on a specific day in August, this is something that people, I imagine, will be able to see past this moment in time somehow, right? Yes, yes. So, so right now the show is being um, streamed on uh, the seventeenth, I believe, and I am going to be part of that uh, experience. In that, I will be there live with people watching it, and I don't exactly know even what's going to happen, but I'll be there in some capacity. Yeah. Um, and then it will be available for the week following that, um, and then I would imagine if it does well, maybe they'll release it again you know it's yeah. like i mean it's yeah. there it exists and so if people want to see it and there's any demand for it after that initial week then i'm sure they will have the opportunity to do that is it um having i mean i know you and anthony actually go around the world performing a show that you guys do together you have your solo albums you have a band and a partner in a band when you are by yourself now um yeah 
not surrounded by, you know, an ensemble of people that become your family. What yeah. is that experience like for you? Uh, well, it's terrifying, certainly mm -hmm. in many ways, but um, it's, it's in, it also in many ways, it's what I have been working towards, maybe even unknowingly and unwittingly, you know, mm -hmm. what I mean? but like, because I have slowly been um, um, whittling away at the amount of the number of musicians that I play with, you know, for, for reasons, quite frankly, that started from and still exist that are financial, mm -hmm. you know, like, I don't want to pay anybody. You know, I don't make a lot of money at these gigs. And a lot of times they are my, my, you know, only income. Like if right. I'm not doing a Broadway musical, I don't do a lot of TV and film. Like it's like my career is like theater and then my music career. And so yeah. it just became more financially viable to me, for me to do this by myself, you know? Right. And so, okay, that being the case now, how do I make an entertaining show, you know, yeah. you know with those parameters? Um, and so the, I, that's kind of how it ended up getting pared down again, makes it no less terrifying, you know, but I've been doing it now for a while. And I've, I think I have, I have found the way of doing it that works for me, sort of my style of storytelling, my style of communicating with the audience and, and my musical style and the way that I adapt these songs that I'm playing to me and my acoustic guitar and my little effects pedal that I have. So the scariest part of anything is starting, right? Like yeah. you go out there and you have to open your mouth and it's you. And, yeah. and start. So when you're writing this piece, let's just focus on this one because you've done others and you'll do more. Yeah. But for today, we're talking about this solo show that yeah, we're yeah. <laughs> excited about. Like, what? How, what's the first line? How did you start? And is it what you first wrote, or has it morphed into something else now? Well, I, nothing was ever actually written. You okay. know, it was really just it. It 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 it, it came out of these stories that I would tell on stage, but um, without any sort of cohesive connection between the songs and the story. So like, I would, I would certainly tell my story of how I got into, you know, Rent, and then I would sing One Song Glories as, as part of another show. But then I would play something else that had no connection to anything, you know what I mean? And so like, yeah. there was just, there was no through line. And so, and also, you know, the rent songs would generally come at the end as, as maybe the encore, you know. Um, so the so it really just it, it came out of a, a, a number of different stories that I would tell, you know, in different sort of shows. Um, and, and I finally also got to the point in my career where I, I had done enough shows on Broadway that I could, you know, that I could put a show together that was long enough to be an entertaining hour, you know. Um, so the timing of it seemed right. Uh, and, um, and uh, so it just seemed like, and it, and it was, again, it was very natural because you know, in ways that the story is the, the story and the show is laid out for me very clearly mm -hmm. in that I go in chronological order. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I've told these stories so often, so nothing's written down. Right. I don't tell the story maybe exactly the same way every time at every show, but it's the same story. And I certainly try and land the jokes, you know, but, yeah. but things, you know, but things may not be told exactly the same way. Um, and, um, and I wanted it to feel in many ways off the cuff, you know, um, and in many ways it is because that's how it started. You know, because when I'm telling a story, I, I never write something down. Mm -hmm. I just tell the story the way I remember it, you know, um, and hopefully that's, you know, mildly entertaining <laughs> to an audience. You know, I think people will be really shocked when you were just so honest about, like, I don't have a gazillion dollars when I, you know, it came right. out of a, a very specific need. I mean, now there's the pandemic. So right. it also how practical in terms of sure. how do you do something at this time? But I think people who are not in the Broadway world would be really shocked to know that just because you were in Rent, Rent didn't make you a gazillionaire. And I right. think now about how Hamilton has been compared in, in and, and Lin-Manuel Miranda has very lovingly talked about Rent's influence on him as an artist and on writing right. this thing. And, and it you know was newsworthy that people in that show were like, you know what, we, we are part of the creation of this thing. And yeah. there was a profit sharing thing that happened. Right. Um, yes. The details of which are personal to the, to the members of that company. But when right. you think back to sort of what rent has become globally, um, forget 
you know, in, in, in the world of the MasterCard commercial, like what it means to people, priceless, and yes, obviously yes. what it meant to you and the career you have because of it. Yes. But what do you think about that? Well, I, what I think about it is that we did it first. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, you know, we, we, Jonathan made it, it was, it was obviously before he died, like he wanted us as a cast to, to share in, in the profits of the show if it ever became something. So we have a, a it's a tiny percentage, but we amongst the 15 of us actually do share in that. Um, and that's specifically at the wishes of Jonathan and at the behest of his family. Wow. Um, so I think that uh, I think it's great. I think I think it's a I think it could be a a fine line in a way bet between how much and this is coming from an actor who's participated in this. Sure. But sure. how much is is how much is that worth? Yeah. Ultimately, how much is that worth? Because, you know, like, I don't obviously know what their deal is, the, who, mm -hmm. the, each individual person in Hamilton and what their deals were. Right. But, but you know, I would, I would venture to guess that um, whatever minuscule fraction of a percentage that I could certainly assume it is, would have been maybe more appreciated in the moment as like more salary. You know, pay the actors, and I'm not saying they didn't get paid well. I don't know what they got paid, but I'm just saying yeah. there are other ways to compensate people, um, uh, you know, for that work. You know what I mean, and and to show your appreciation for the work that they put in. You know what I mean? That maybe might actually be better than giving them some tiny little thing. You know, I mean, who knows? Yeah. That's that's between them. I'm just saying. I was just thinking about it off the top yeah. of my head. You know, yeah, yeah, pay yeah. me an extra two grand a week for the next year. Yeah, that then we're cool. You know, I would. I mean, I don't know. You know. Um, so, but I, but I do think it's great. And I think that we, as you know, you know this, uh, you know, as somebody who's originated roles as well, like, you know, we, we do bring quite a bit to what will ultimately be something that lasts forever. Yeah. You know, you, know, you, you sort of joked before or, or were being vulnerably honest before about, you know, the give the people what they want. When did right. you sort of realize that, I mean, everyone talks about typecasting, everyone realizes like, I don't want to play Roger over and over again. And certainly when we look at your Broadway career, you have not. I mean, you've right. really been able to sort of, I mean, you're in Chicago, you're in, I mean, you did so yeah. many, something rotten and, and have been able to bring your comedic skills, not just your incredible singular vocal talent, because yeah, Roger as a character is not hilarious. Um, no, by no stretch. <laughs> it's not. And so after that show, people might not have even realized how funny you are and how you understand rhythm and timing musically and comedically and how much you're capable of as an artist in terms of telling stories in other ways. Um, you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, but, but in terms of going, you know what, I can try to remove myself from being so aligned with the thing that made me famous um, or I can embrace it and you don't want to feel like you know Paul Anka right yeah, like yeah. you right <laughs> by the way I, I love Paul Anka I just want to say that I. yes I, I knew right after Aida that if I was going to continue to have a career uh, you know a long career yeah uh, something had to happen that like uh, like the next thing I did was going to kind of make it or break it yeah for, for you know and 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 the next thing was cabaret mm -hmm. and so once i got cabaret I, I that really hit home i was like if i fail at this oh it's over God. i will only Don't ever fail be at seen. this yeah i will only ever be seen as like that the rock guy who can uh, uh and so um <laughs> and so i was like um so i i i it was a, a tremendous amount of pressure but you know, look, I, I aggressively pursued that job. You know what I mean? So it's like, all yeah. right, you got what you wanted. What are you going to do with it? You know, but and I had a very short time to go in, right? Didn't two you have to two like weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. It's only ever two weeks. Yeah. Um, which I have done many times since then, but yeah. So, and, but I knew, um, I knew that if I could get this job and I could pull this off in a role that was like a real acting role, you know what I mean? Like this was like a role for like a real yes. actor. Like I knew that if I succeeded in that, I would be seen as something more you know what i mean or something in addition to what i was already being seen yeah as. um and so um so i definitely felt that pressure um and then uh and then it went great you know it it, it went really well and um and 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 it also 
what it, what it did more than anything for me personally, what it it, it instilled in me a, a a respect for the craft of acting and and for what we do that I didn't really have before. You know mm. what I mean? I kind of took it for granted as like, oh, I'm just naturally talented and I can do anything. You know what I mean? Like I kind of took it I I took it for granted a little bit, and then I started to realize after Rent, certainly when Aida came along, that like you know what. I'm not that naturally talented and I can't just like, I have to work at certain things, you know, cause I didn't get good reviews for Aida, you know? And so like, I was like, oh, I'm not perfect, you know? Um, and so again, these, all of these things made me realize that like I, I th this next thing was very important. And then to me, it, it's the most fun thing about what we do is to, I, you know, I love nothing more than to literally disappear as much as I can. Like, I always joke, like, like I should be in like, who's the guy in Beauty and the Beast who's like a candle or like, he's, you, you don't even see, all you see is face, but everything else is costume and stuff because I just love disappearing, you know? Like the more costume and makeup and hair and accents and, 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 and whatever it is, you know? Like that's, cause that's what's so fun about what we do. We're playing pretend, we get to be somebody else, you know? And, um, and so I love to physically transform. That always helps my my character. And all the shows that I've done, to one degree or another, I've gotten to physically transform in some way. Or you know, I um, I I just put on mute because, of course, suddenly there's like a dog, a fire truck, and four people <laughs> talking right outside the window. But it's New York. It's your it's your hometown. This is what's happening. And the F train is rumbling above me. Um, I know that everyone who who gets a minute with you just selfishly takes a minute to say thank you publicly. And I'm going to be so unoriginal and thank you publicly for oh the God. endless, endless amount of joy and comfort your voice has brought to me on so oh many goodness. occasions in my life. And as you know, from so many, the idea that you can then share this thing with your children um, and then they yeah. love it as much as you do. And you hear them singing in the car just as much as we did. I feel bad for you that you have never had the chance to sit in a car and listen to Rent and let it be <laughs> and pretend you're in Rent and have it be the the soundtrack to your life because no if rent really if rent ever came joy. on a, thank you if rent ever came on in the car it was turn that off <laughs> dad oh it's it. you turn oh, it off so <laughs> embarrassing i know that's what's so crazy and humbling about all of it um well i want to ask you before you leave and i really hope you'll come back again because i know you have a lot going on today and i think you're on stars in the house I also, am, which it. is just the most extraordinary thing that has raised so much money for the Actors Fund. It's mind blowing. Um, Seth and James you, are my buddies. I love them. I mean, all hail Seth and James yes. and you for giving your time to it. Um, can you share a little known fact about you? Uh, um, okay. Hmm. Sure. My favorite job that I ever had when I was a kid growing up was as a girls Catholic school. And I'm going to say more about this was as a, a girls Catholic school janitor <laughs> when I was in college. But let me just say that I came in after all the girls were gone. So it's not like I walked around while they were there. No, but it, it was such a, a cool job. It was a disgusting job and girls are just as disgusting as boys in the bathroom. <laughs> but um, there was there was something really relaxing and calming. It was just me and two other dudes. And we went into this enormous, creepy old school um, out here on Long Island and we would clean it up. You know, we mop the floors and clean the cafeteria and do all this stuff. Um, and there was just something really, I don't know, like almost meditative about it, you know. I loved it. That's incredible. Adam, thank <laughs> you for being on the show. Thank you for your cleaning skills. And thank you. Um, absolutely. For your talent and just your beautiful <laughs> Thanks, humanity. Ilana. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, before we go, yes. we're done with the episode. I okay. did not know you guys had split up. And I'm happy I know, I'm to sorry, take that I, out. I'm, no. no, it's fine. Leave it. Leave it. Okay. I'll tell you why. Because because I, 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 I kind of want it to be known, but yeah. I didn't. We didn't want to do any kind of public thing about it's just it. Just a but natural, I'm, organic thing. That, but yeah. but I would kind of like because I'm dating people, and it would be nice 
to for people to not think that I'm that out on my life, yes. right? Which is why I'm divorced in the first place. Yes. So, I, so I, you know, I, Got so it. I kind of, yeah, yeah. All right, good. I just always check with people because I've had appreciate it. Lots of couples make announcements that end up being circulated, yeah. and I just wanted to make sure it was okay. All right. Yes. Well, here's to new love and and all the work. And Thanks, um, Alana. Bye. Yes. Bye, Bye, sweetie. So nice to Bye. see you. Bye. Nice to see you.